Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number 22 of our official series, where you watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. That said, I wanted to continue our conversation similar to our last video, so we'll be focusing again on lead lines for drift trains. And as always, Discord and server links are in the description. I would highly recommend watching the entire video, but if there's some specific tracks you want to learn about, timestamps with track names will be in the description and playback bar. That said, let's get into it. And today, or rather Friday, we started on CG Drift Cafe. It's a newer CG track release. Here we're in our P2 position following our friend Scooby. And normally we start with the lead. I thought it'd be nice just for this intro to have a little bit more of some tandem view. So really, as we're watching this, um, we're going to have leads. We're going to have chases, a lot more uh, leads in general, just to rehammer some concepts home. And the big thing with this track and, and many more, we want to again talk about if you're leading, if you're in a train, you should be thinking forward momentum. You want to continue taking that momentum in every corner. If you feel like you're not moving anywhere, or you're losing a lot of speed, that might be an indication that you're taking a, a little bit of a weird line that's going to affect the uh, train and specifically the drift train. So here we're going to switch to a, a lead from me. I don't have anyone behind me, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to look to see how these lines might have changed from our last video. So basically, a lot of these corners, I'm kind of thinking about how do I carry that forward momentum? You can see there's some banking areas inside of this track, but really this line uh, does feel a lot better. I still think there's a couple areas for me to tweak a little bit, but again, when I'm taking these lead lines, really my thought is how do I continue that forward momentum? And uh, this track is just like I've mentioned before, uh, very similar to Sequoia Park. So here, initiation we're looking for that inside corner all the way to the outside if we can a little bit of a change on my side inside corner there transition and then here not bad of a line not cutting it too sharp in then going back to the outside here looking for the midline and then another midline inside looking for that inside corner here and then you can see didn't carry quite the momentum i needed to and slowed up thankfully there wasn't really anyone behind me except for one person again midline inside line uh and then you guys have seen the rest i feel like Maybe we rushed through the CG Drift Cafe, but we have seen it before, so wasn't sure how much I should include. That said, we're going to switch now over to US Air Raceway. So this is a very unique track. I think this specific track that we're on, the section of the track, is the quote-unquote advanced area. Now, I'm not going to say I'm an expert at all, and I think there's a lot of uh, areas that I can improve on. But now that you guys have seen the line, let's kind of talk through what I'm looking for and what corners that... I'm kind of visually trying to aim for too. So right about here. So this part is tricky because you have an uphill to a left sweep. So you kind of have to have a little bit of muscle memory here. But let's just talk about the lines that I'm looking for. So here, transition, taking a mid, maybe arguably you could take an outside line, trying to stay in a little bit of drift. I've seen people straighten there. I think you can do either or. Transition, a little bit of e-brake in some situations, not there. Looking for the inside to inside. Taking that now outside. And then I have been taking it a little bit inside, but you can see losing a little bit of my momentum. So again, I could probably work on that inside to that little outside spot with the concrete near the wall to this inside to another inside. And again, down sweep left a little bit. It's actually, it's really hard to explain, uh, especially rewatching it, but it's kind of like a visual thing that I think you kind of have to memorize, which is not the greatest thing to say, but after a while, I think it, it might make more sense. But anyways, E break initiation to this inside inside we want to go outside and then again i was looking a little inside but you can still see me not carrying as much momentum as maybe as i could outside to the little concrete patch to the wall not going too crazy on it inside to inside and i think you can go a little bit further out in that wall section too um again as long as you're carrying momentum you can basically run wherever you want but now we switch over to a chase position looks like we're here in p3 so you can see them straightening, not carrying that drift, which is okay. I should probably be following them. I'm losing a little bit of procs because I don't. Inside, inside is what we're looking for, which is where they're hitting. And we're going to watch right here. You can see this outside line, which I think arguably is the right line there, um, actually, and especially rewatching it. Then here to the concrete patch, to the wall, to the inside corner, inside corner, then transition to that up downhill left inside and then again mid or an outside depending on how you want to take it and kind of a rinse and repeat i think the hardest part about this track is this part and i struggle with it myself so 
A little bit of initiation transition for a feign entry and then a little bit of e-break, not too, anything too crazy. Help you uh, kind of set up. And you have seen I've done it with and without the e-break. Uh, it really just depends on, I think, my momentum. But that outside line that uh, the lead took, I think is the right line there. Rewatching it especially kind of makes sense. Most sense to me anyway. But that's US Air Raceway. We're now gonna switch to a kind of basically a new track. It's a uh, Taki Main, I think. I'm not sure. It's like a new version of Takamaki that we're used to running. Uh, I also wanna give a quick shout out to Boski uh, for making additional pit box for us and a uh, shout out to Haunter for actually helping getting that done. Was, wasn't even sure that was an option, but uh, shout out to you guys for making it happen. But this track is a lot different than the normal one. Really, the biggest thing is you have a lot of banking corners. So here, it might, I don't know how easy it is to see on, uh, on this video, but yeah, that's a little bit of a bank corner. You can kind of see it from here. This is going to be a banking corner. And then you have basically every corner is a banking corner to a degree, to a degree. So we've ran this a decent amount. Actually, there's another clip at the end of this video with this track in it. But let me just kind of give you my thoughts uh, after driving for only about an hour, maybe two on this track. So right here, similar to Takamaki, we have this long straight little Monji action transition initiation. Now, I think you can run this about, yeah, right about there out and then look for this inside spot right there. So you have nice to take, I would argue a midline here, not quite an inside. Here that momentum forward. I don't think that was a great example of it, but that is what happened. And then outside, and then basically you're carrying this mid or outside line. And then right here, I think it's important to note, inside inside line, looking for that inside corner. Transition to inside corner. Now, right here, I see a lot of people make this mistake. I think you can go outside just like that. And it'll set you up really nice. And then you want to take inside. I think that right there was a little too outside. If you take the inside, you don't have to fight the bank as much. And you, what you're really watching us is like me, rather trying to figure out and like fish a little bit for lines. So each corner I'm taking a little bit different, trying to see how it feels and how the car is going to react as well as the train obviously behind me. So here again, I like this outside line to this inside. You're kind of shooting for it, but not aiming at it necessarily. Then this mid line, then forward, forward, forward momentum here. That's a really good uh, actually view of that. And then here you can run, I'd say maybe a little outside mid uh, outside line transition. You have this inside corner that you're kind of aiming for back to another inside corner and then here kind of putting your rear end near that uh near those cones there and then transition and right there again i think it could be a little bit further in but that's actually not bad it's actually not bad so let's switch over to a chase position we're going to see how our train or the train rather uh takes these different lines and how it's being led so this is going to be a lot different because we're all still trying to figure out what makes sense so here I'm going to be in P4, it looks like, in a six stack train. A little late on the transition, but again, not sure how everyone's going to be taking this line. Similar style of what I was recommending for that line. There you can see taking a little bit more inside line and then transition. And then you can see there a mid outside line, which works, which works actually. And then inside, and then you can see that cut right there. And you can see how the train kind of grabbing together a little bit. And then this outside bank just really feels awkward to me personally just to me personally and i actually left a little bit additional i think actually throughout this whole entire video i added a little bit of additional footage so we could really see normally we do like three uh leads and then maybe a chase but i actually added a lot more footage so you guys can really see and and the continuous footage i, I should mention uh throughout this so there you can see me taking a little bit more of an inside line we're going to switch our view uh our eyeballs over to the track cam that might be a little bit better of an indication of what's going on. So here we're looking pretty solid. Transition a little bit late, but we're all kind of synced on the late transition. You're taking more of an outside midline, transitioning all the way out. Not bad looking on the track cam, a little bit late on my part actually. And then you can see there a little bit of a stack on the P1 to P3. Transitioning and and you guys have heard me before, but you know when I'm in a track that I'm not super comfortable with, or a track that I'm also not really sure what other people are going to do. I take this uh, a little bit further of a step back. So about a, a car or two of proximity just to help uh, if I do make any mistakes or if they make many mistakes, mostly, you know, it's typically my fault, to be honest. But that way, there's a little bit of that uh, pocket of proximity to help cushion any issues that happen. So really, I'm just trying to stay back, see what they're doing. 
uh this track though in general i think the lines that i've kind of pointed out um will be a benefit for the entire train but i think that there are some different lines that can be done here for sure uh just from my experience on this track so far i think that uh this makes the most sense but honestly a really really fun track i like uh actually what they did with the track the only thing maybe i'd take uh a little bit of points off of i think that the track texture i really enjoyed the way takamaki looked uh genuinely it looked very realistic and you know how i love realism so uh other than that though i mean the track very fun i actually would arguably probably prefer this over the old one so uh again if i'm hopefully i'm pronouncing it right shout out to boski uh for making this happen shout out for haunter for reaching out and getting us the additional pit boxes but now we switch over to Sequoia Park. So we actually did talk about this, the CG Drift Cafe, and now we're on Sequoia Park. And you might be asking, well, you know, you said they're similar. So why are they similar? Well, I think really the biggest thing here is, uh, and, and I'm pretty sure we've talked about this track before, really taking the right line will open up and I think make you actually enjoy this track, where if you're taking the lines a little bit off, it's really not going to help you. And you're going to feel like you're fighting the track through every single corner and that you're just not setting yourself up for success uh, in every corner. And this is another great track to give the example of how one corner sets you up for the next and then et cetera, et cetera, right? So let's talk about what that looks like and what we're looking for on our next lead run here. So here we're trying to keep our speed up, transition. And then here you don't want to e-brake, no left foot, but, uh, left foot brake needed you just kind of want to throw a lot of angle and carry the car forward especially with the swarm cars that can do that transition to the outside we're looking for that outside zone which it looks like we hit pretty decently and then personally i've been liking taking this like inside line to this outside i feel like it sets you up pretty nice for this outside zone right there and then looking for the inside corner transition to this outside area keeping that proximity or uh, the momentum forward excuse me Transition then to this outside zone. Looking for this inside touch and go, technically, I think is what it's called. Transition to this outside. And you can see these lines are really setting me up. Each corner that I'm exiting is setting me up pretty well for the entries. So I think I have one more run here just to re talk about it. So transition, carrying a speed, letting the car momentum and the grip carry me through this corner no e-brake or left foot brake necessary transition towards the left hand side of the track to this outside zone carrying our momentum forward looking for the inside corner of that and then that's setting us up pretty nice here for this outside zone then inside zone is where i should be aiming i'm a little bit off on that but we hit the outside corner okay and then transition back to the outside you can see me making a little bit of mistake there actually and then inside touch and go transition is outside you can start that transition of the corner you don't have to aim for that outside zone in that corner you can kind of carry the corner through the whole thing and it'll lead you pretty nicely to the outside zone and here running the outside ish of the track transition and then i think this is going to actually going to lead us to a chase position so now we're going to be in a chase and we're going to watch uh or rather we should orient our eyes the track camera at the top and let's see what this lead looks like and what maybe pain points the train's going to see so you can see there me taking a little bit different line impacting p3 p4 but here i'm just trying to stay a little bit engaged i don't think i'm really confident in the lines that he's taking not because of the person in p1 but rather just not quite sure what he's thinking but he's taking the a lot of these corners actually very well Missing the inside touch and go, so we're going to see how it affects him. And you can see a late entry into this corner, but it's actually not a problem. So that can be a little bit different of line. I still think that the inside touch and go is important. Then he runs the outside line here, the outside corner, transition. And then again, we're going to rinse and repeat, see what that looks like. So again, carrying momentum through that uh, initial corner here. Transitioning hitting the outside zone pretty nicely and you can see the train is stacking so i would argue that there's a mistake that i'm making there in p2 that it's not very cohesive for the train that's actually my mistake and we're going to look for the transition here a little bit late on p3 
we're still locked in i'm adding a little bit too much proximity i think on p1 in the p2 position really trying to follow his uh his line and i think it's really important as you guys are in these trains or learning uh really focus on your transition timing your transition timing if you hit it correctly every time will kind of signify if you're having issues like catching up or something that maybe you're taking the lines different not giving enough room for proximity or for uh transitions uh, and things like that hopefully that makes sense we're kind of rushing through it i feel like a little bit but we're switching now to i think this was in our last video cg final bout two and this is again uh i'm not sure if it's because of the way that you know cg has made these tracks but really this track you want to look for these zones these zones will put you in a good position overall through the track and i did work a little bit more on my lines i still think i have a lot more to actually improve uh but this is me kind of thinking about the lines that we talked about last weekend but let's talk about what that looks like as we come out of this outside zone slash corner so here hitting outside zone transitioning after transition shifting into fourth grabbing that gear into the inside zone here transitioning looking for this outside zone hitting it pretty nicely here and then i think i could have had a little bit more angle and because i didn't i actually missed that inside zone a little bit but trying to carry that momentum transition the inside to this outside zone and then here i've been trying to get a little bit earlier and a little bit deeper in this outside zone running it pretty much all the way out transitioning i've been looking for this inside but i really think you can run a little bit more mid outside line here and i think i'm having a little bit of issues on the outside zone because of this initial setup into that corner but inside zone transition taking this outside line all the way to the outside zone here and again another rinse and repeat action shifting right here after transition grabbing forth looking for that inside zone then moving our focus up to the track cam we're going to watch outside zone do we make the same mistake a little bit better still a little bit late on the shift and you can see there p2 having a little bit of issues because of this mi mistake that i made inside zone to outside zone again hoping to enter a little bit earlier and get a little bit deeper in that zone which it looks like i did transition and then here you can see a little bit more of a mid outside line we're going to see how it sets us up for this outside zone which actually looks a little bit nicer so i think there is some truth to be said on that part inside zone transition and again outside zone and i think we're going to now switch over to a chase position so we're going to grab a gear get into fourth look for that inside zone a little bit shallow but we got there and then boom we're now in our chase position so we're actually here in p5 so pretty far back from p1 so when we're in these situations i like to give a little bit of proximity just a couple of drivers i think looking at the name tag is kind of hard to read i'm not quite sure on how they're going to take the line so just kind of chilling in the back just watching what's going on and here too like this is another thing we've talked about before but i think it's important to mention i'm kind of learning and trying to see what lines that the lead is taking as well as like how those lines are going to impact the train and here being in a p5 position is actually very unique because it's going to give me a lot of input on the different drivers and how they're taking these lines and the effects of those lines i should say too so here i think i should have in the fourth i'm not sure i can't really hear it super well but here we go into another run just to see i thought it would be nice to see two different runs uh specifically in different positions so it's a little dark still trying to configure the uh lighting correctly but here we're looking for inside to outside looks like our lead car is hitting it pretty well outside zone i'm looking at the track cam at the top as we talk here also i i swear i fixed it but then i guess uh it wants to just stay in this view so i'm not sure why my apologies uh, i'll have to try to figure it out sometime but yeah just trying to stay with a little bit of a mistake here making in p3 and you can see me having to really make a lot of adjustments here so i think in general i think the line choices that i mentioned are are basically right i'm just not feeling super confident enough to tell you that for sure this is the lines that you should run but maybe i'll give you guys a little bit of an idea of how to approach uh, that track in the future but now we switch to another track and i think uh it looks like the server's been enjoying this track more and more uh each time we drive it and i did do a couple more additional runs so we can really talk through it uh again i've been trying to refocus on these lines to try to help during these videos so let's talk about it here in a second i'm gonna take a drink of water 
<clears throat> All right. So here we're looking for, and you guys, it's going to sound familiar from last video, inside to inside corner, get our wheel to drop a little bit right there, transition, looking for that wall. We want to stay within the white line there, transition a little bit of e-brake, ride the wall, at least it feels like the inside wall there, transition. We can be mid, and you can see there, outside line, I'm taking a very outside line there, outside, 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 transition, and again, we're staying within the confines of that white line to our right, transition a little bit. Okay, I was looking at chat, I guess, for some reason. Uh, not a great time to look at chat, uh, to be honest, but it's good. Uh, let's re-talk about it. Inside to inside. We're looking for that little tire drop section, just a little bit, just a little slight tire drop. Transition, run that wall a little bit more, which is nice. And then inside, looking for that inside wall. Transition. You can run the inside wall, but it looks like I've been going a little bit more outside. Again, either, I think, generally work here transition looking for that white line to keep us centered kind of running that white line a little bit on the inside transition then looking for this outside section letting the car weight and the momentum carry me through letting off throttle just a little bit to then get a little bit more grip and then have the grip carry us through and again rinse and repeat basically the same thing very short track but we saw some crazy um i'm not sure if they're in this video but we saw some crazy trains on this track actually really impressive it seems like a lot of people were picking it up understanding that corner right there where you have a little bit of e-brake not running it out and uh having that forward momentum it seems like a lot of people were picking up on that pretty quick so shout out to you guys picking up this track so well uh, i think this track actually took me a lot longer than i care to admit but this section two again a little bit let off throttle to re-engage let it grip up and help us through that really helps on that really long sweeper for sure but now we're going to switch over to a chase so boom, we're in a chase position. So here you see me in P2, trying to stay as close as I can to the car, trying my hardest not to have contact, but really trying to stay engaged. Transition, looks like they're running very similar lines to what we've been talking about so far. A little bit more inside on this line, but that's not a problem. It's actually not bad at all. And again, they're doing a really good job of carrying that forward momentum, keeping that forward momentum uh, forward really a little bit of tire drop looking good a little bit of wavering not bad running that outside line staying within the white line running really the white line 100 percent and then boom we move over to another chase now in p3 and i thought it would be nice to throw uh some back-to-back -back chases here just so you guys get to kind of see are these cars or are, they, are these drivers rather running the same lines are they doing things different they're doing things different what is the impact and you can see ultimately the train not doing too bad here i think p2 got a little bit behind but caught up pretty nicely and here we're just trying to stick it right in the door stay really close on proximity and it's very helpful when you kind of know what lines are going to be running they have very fun track still recommend higashi fuji very fun now we go to a track that you guys may have seen before and i feel like maybe it's been in like every video these last couple sessions i'm actually not too sure about that but this is rhythm and flow now, this track again, I think it's a generally easy track, but there's one section that I know a lot of people had asked about. So I thought it'd be good to include a little bit more footage than maybe I normally would here. So let's talk about it. But as I mentioned before, this line leading up to this hill is gonna either make or break your downhill descent. So here, looking for that left side of the track, adding a lot of, uh, not a lot of angle there, but typically adding a lot of angle for the car to then transition itself carry it through running the outside line you can see there a little bit of static uh it's really hard to kind of sometimes gauge that inside to inside maybe arguably midline and then here again just want to call this out want to stay inside midline transition inside midline kind of inside arguably actually carrying that mo forward momentum as we go up the hill transition with a little bit of a manji and then here i feel like if i look at this inside corner it sets me up pretty well i end up being more of like a midline and then here you can kind of run the wall even a little bit more aggressive if you wanted to be and then you can either transition at this section or a little bit more on the right hand, hand side of the track but i like that part because i'm looking for that inside corner here looking for the outside white line and then look right here outside to outside you can uh, not really the best execution of what i'm talking about but basically when you go up that uphill you wanted to go from the right hand side of the track transition up basically at the top or the the peak of that hill 
And then once you transition there, you kind of carry that momentum down and then you have a transition to run the outside line slash wall. I think during that spot, you don't want to be like fully on throttle. You're going to have a moment of uh, throttle release, which again, when we re are releasing our throttle, we're allowing the car to kind of regrip a little bit and for the tires to kind of, uh, I guess, catch in. So here we're going to watch outside the next outside and then outside and again you're, you're not really seeing any i don't think any left foot or e-brake and it's not really needed if you let the car momentum and your throttle control help you through that section it will feel really really nice and i think it'll make a little bit more sense so now we're in a p2 position following this gray corvette here in front of us you can see him taking that inside line making sure that forward momentum is happening now, this was a unique line I thought it'd be interesting to show. Going fully outside and not monging, I think it can work, but it just still felt a little bit awkward. I know I've seen a couple people run it, but I do. I, I kind of just feel like the little mongy section helps the train kind of reestablish itself. As I know that uphill section can be uh, a little bit of hairy, a little bit hairy, excuse me. And then here, looking for the transition. And again, a little bit of left foot brake from me just because I'm in the P2 position, but you can see the left foot brake took me more on the inside line. And I thought that would also be helpful for you guys to see in practice and what that looked like. If you can stay away from the left foot or e-brake, I think it's going to set you up pretty well. But now we switch over to, uh, and actually, sorry, by the way, Rhythm and Flow is now Saturday. And now this is our second track, uh, TCL Togue Circuit. Pretty crazy of a track for warm-up, uh, but the server slash lobby slash chat wanted it, so here we are. <clears throat> There's still a lot of lines that I gotta improve, I'll be honest, uh, but I think I can maybe call out a little bit of what we're looking for, and uh, hopefully that's gonna be helpful, but you can see there's gonna be a lot of mistakes. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys in this uh, track. I, it's just such a long track that you don't have the maybe the ability to just like replay a corner back to back to back, you're kind of having to run the full track. So I think the learning aspect takes a little bit longer than a smaller track would normally take. So uh, I actually did add quite a few runs in here. I think this is actually why the video is a little bit longer, but there's a lot of things to unpack here. So I thought it was really important. And this is something I'm trying to learn. And I'm sure that those of you that are trying to learn this track, you might be struggling with, I think it's okay. Um, but let's, let's talk about what we're looking for. I'm gonna take another drink of water. And you can see there a little bit of lag happening. Um, I think that was my setup, not the video or anything. So we're going to start basically at the beginning, which is going to be here. So transitioning this outside and then here, we want to really try to carry basically outside midline, no problem. Uh, then we transition. Now this part is important. You're going to go a little bit more shallow than you probably think you should. It's going to help you maintain angle all the way up here, looking for this inside corner to have our transition spot transition and then here you can run outside inside it looks like i tend to go a little bit more inside there and then transition we want to run i think like a mid line basically and then right here those little strips to indicate our when we should be transitioning through we should be running the outside and then pulling in right at this uh light post and apologies for the stuttering I, it's actually from the recording it looks like transitioning uh with an e-brake not a manji Running the outside, this is actually a really good example of this line. Inside to inside. So out inside, outside, inside, and then running that midline to inside. We're gonna transition. Again, I like to run these a lot more midlines. So we're looking for now actually an inside to set us up and continue that momentum forward. Transition. We're gonna be running, I think, a more of a midline again. Yep, more of a midline here. Transition to inside a little bit to outside uh it looks like i made a mistake and may have uh killed everyone behind me you can see me glancing back several times probably feeling super guilty about that but that's kind of the idea on this track i mean again i don't feel super qualified to give you guys a lot of advice here but we're gonna have one more lead run and see if we can do i think it's one more this lead a little different here the transition we want to run this outside slash midline you can see very midline looking transition to inside of that corner carry us out on the left side of the track pull a little bit into that corner right there transition on that inside patch 
transition looking for the inside more of a midline it should be i think you could i think you could probably actually run in uh, outside as well transition midline We're carrying that forward momentum again forward momentum is a key looking for that initiation slash transition on those little yellow rumble lines i guess pulling it into the third light post carrying our forward momentum trying not to mind you making a little bit of mistakes so you see almost a little bit of a a stutter on my part inside inside to outside inside and you can see from our last run a little bit different line just because i'm making a couple mistakes here inside transition we have a midline here maybe even arguably inside transition this should hopefully be an inside to outside to carry our momentum i think a little bit aggressive on my part actually transition midline actually that's a little bit more of an aggressive outside line which is okay because we pull it on the inside near the exit inside to outside trying to carry that forward momentum we stay super outside maybe a little bit too outside actually transition and then right here inside and then i've been going a little bit more aggressive on this inside line i think it's a little bit better for drift trains i'm not totally sure actually not totally sure but i think we're gonna find figure out actually a lot here on our chase position which should be coming up here in a few seconds so boom we're now in a chase position and specifically we're now in p3 of a chase we're gonna watch what they're gonna be doing for the lines you kind of heard my thoughts on the line so we're gonna see if they do it different if they do it the same if it's good or if it's bad based on what they do looks like they're going for the inside line there another inside line maybe midline we could argue here transition looks like a midline again looking for that yellow rumble strips to make sure we're initiating at the end of running the outside line pretty well they are the inside a little bit more aggressive here and then you can see this manji that they're having to do because of that line setup i really think that if we can kind of get out that manji from this uh these runs that it will set up a lot more people for success but that's a little bit newer of a thing i think most of the time people are manjing uh, but that's just a personal thing. I used to actually Manji most of the time, but uh, I got my eyes open a little bit, uh, trying to run that straight through, not having that Manji section. But here, inside the outside, and also the stutters, I think, will start dissipating. I know I actually was uh, noticing it while I was in game, so I think after this track, those are going to go away, maybe. Uh, now that I think about it, there's another track that had a couple issues. But, anyways, midline, you can see us losing a lot of proximity, but. You're taking a little bit more of aggressive line. Try not to be too crazy. You can see me taking my normal inside line instead of probably doing what I should have, following the P1, P2, and what lines they're doing. But here we're basically caught up. Still losing a little bit of proximity, but not rushing the catch up too much as I'm trying to think that there's a bunch of people behind me. And in this case, there actually is. But a little bit more shallow lines as I'm catching up here. You can see our P2 dropped out. So we just have now our P1 and now I'm P2. So there's going to be a lot of pressure for me to make sure that I'm in an active chase with our P1. I'd argue I'm a little bit far back. I'm trying to pull it in a little bit here without making too many mistakes. But as you've kind of heard, I'm not feeling super confident on this track. And I'm actually not sure if I've driven with P1 before. So trying to give a healthy amount of proximity to me and P1 here. Then we're going to see outside is looking nice. We want to pull into the inside on that third pull. And then you can see a little bit of a manji. I don't think I was set up properly to take that line right, but uh, I think we lost a couple people in that process because they were expecting more of the full forward versus that manji section. But here again, following P1. P1 generally doing a, a good job with the lines, making a little bit of a mistake, recovering it pretty quickly on my side in P2. You can see our P3 all over us doing a pretty good job. Of course, I commentated uh, hindsight, made, made them mess up, I'm sure. But here, not really doing a great job, I would argue. Uh, I would like to see this a lot more tight, a lot better on our transition timing. It's not terrible, but you can see the line choices, especially tracks like these where they're really flowy, a little bit faster, really easy to lose your proximity quickly. And this is a great, a great example of that. And especially a long form track like this, uh, very easy to do for sure. That said, we switch over to Tum. Oh, a sock of sideways totally what i meant so a sock of sideways i have again been struggling with this track um and i just mentioned this because i don't think these lines are perfect i can give you a little bit of insight of what i think the lines maybe should be but i'm genuinely still figuring out so if you're like well yeah bro you're saying this but you're not doing what you're trying to say 
fair enough. Uh, I'm just trying my best to give as much information to you guys. They're also learning and maybe some insight of what I think. Try, try it out, and uh, I'm always willing to adapt and adjust my lines for sure. The more I learn, the more, the better I get. I think the more I'm willing to change, you know. But anyways, here's what we're thinking for the line. So we go outside here. We want to kind of basically run the wall if we can. That'll set us up really nice for this outside zone. Going a little bit too far on my part. I was trying to pull it in on the inside corner there. But a little bit of static probably on my part. Uh, wasn't given enough room to transition, but it could be because I was making a little bit too much of aggressive stops or angles inside to this inside. Looking for this outside rumble strip to run to this inside corner, inside corner to this outside little concrete strip. And then I've been trying to pull this a little bit on the inside to help this forward momentum here, outside, and then outside transition. And then here, not as aggressive as normal, but I'm really looking for this inside line. And I was trying to think like, how can I run a line that's gonna have that maintained pro uh, momentum? Sorry, I keep saying momentum and proximity interchangeably, but I'm saying, how can I carry that forward momentum here? And you'll see, uh, at least you probably have seen a couple adjustments that I made relatively the same i think really the biggest thing we're looking at changing would be the long straight to the kind of sweeping corner to the next corner and then the corner thereafter which just to say as we're watching right here this corner been trying to modify this see what makes sense set us up really well for this inside corner and then also set us up pretty well for this inside corner uh to the next corner Kind of hard to say, like, I, I feel guilty even, like, recommending lines. But you kind of see what I'm looking for and maybe, like, verbally is helping just on, like, where and what corners I'm looking at. It, it seems like such an easy track, man, and I'm sure that should be, but I definitely see myself struggling a lot, trying really hard on that momentum concept, that forward momentum in every single corner, especially hard after the initiation wide sweeper. So right here, we're following P3. I'm not too sure I was gonna take it. You can see going outside and then that outside setting up the like a uh, awkward speed. And that's why I've been trying to cut in that line a little bit harder. And then this trying to cut in hard. You can see that diagonal forward momentum. You can see that P1 took a much different line and I was able to just boom right on the door even though there was a ton of depart proximity that was actually generated between the, uh, the two of us. But because of that forward momentum line and the non uh, forward momentum line that I think P1 took, ended up having us kind of clash together. Not clash, but uh, end up back together as far as proximity goes. But I think I have one more run here for us to kind of analyze. Here we're very far back, very far back. But we're gonna watch, you can see a lot of people taking the outside line. You can see how hard it is for us here in the back of the train to really keep up with that. Running an inside corner, this inside corner looking good. I think really like the biggest choke point in this track has got to be uh, after the the long straight into the wide sweeper into i guess that's technically then corner corner one or turn one i should say maybe i think i have one more clip of this run so let's see again let, with that in mind let's see how this works so here we're on the outside outside and then we're going to see how they take it and what happens here so this could be a driver skill issue it could be line issue you're doing actually a lot better and it looked like to me for a second that P1 actually cut that in and that actually helped the momentum of the entire train. So P1 through five or four uh, and then myself and then anyone else that's behind me. So I think there's really something to that. I'm going to have to run this track a little bit more to really tell you, but it does feel like that's the right answer, man. My gut tell me that's the right answer. But yeah, that's the socket sideways. I think we've actually seen this a uh, decent amount of times in recent uh, videos. But we now switch over to a track that is the OG OG of tracks. Uh, literally, not like the first, I believe, modded track ever. This is Tamada, specifically the V3 version. If you haven't driven this track, I mean, you got to pay homage or homage, one of the two, to the, uh, to the OG OGs. The OGs that are the OGs of the OGs. Anyways, I'm done. Uh, but let me just tell you about this track. I think my line's a little different than some people, so take it with a grain of salt. But here, I like to go wide, then throw it near the near the wall there. Set you up really nice, and then look at that outside white line to inside corner. A little manji action to the inside corner. Again, we're trying to carry our forward momentum to the outside. And here, I've been pulling it inside. I did try to take it wide. It did not really work out very well. Inside corner, 
pit inside corner. I think you'd take more of a midline if you want, honestly. I don't think you have to be that aggressive on the inside corner. A little Manji action again. And then here, just trying to really run the outside. Ends up looking really aggressive. But it sets you up pretty nice for this mid to then inside line here. And then another inside to outside. And then inside. Inside, maybe midline, arguably. Outside, all the way out near those cones. And then boom, trying to set us up, ourselves up pretty nice here. Looking for that white line a little bit. A little bit shallow, maybe, I'd argue here. Transition inside. Looking for this inside to outside to inside again. Uh, not carrying as much momentum as I'd like. And here, taking a little bit more of an outside line, as you can see. And I think that is maybe the answer. Transition. Outside, letting the car carry itself. You can see no left of brake. Really needed a little aggressive. And you can see the train looked a little bit staticky. It's hard to see with that track cam. A little bit of static generated, but it was all still kind of together. So not terrible. But it doesn't look like a great lead. And then I think we have one more run to see what else we can do here. So outside. Transition to the wall. That's super shallow. <laughs> Inside. Uh, really, okay, so this line is incredibly shallow. And you can see it was kind of... I kind of set myself up for a shallow line when I took that shallow line slash entry. Um... Yeah, and if I remember correctly, there was some interesting song requests from uh, chat happening at this time. So <laughs> uh, I'm not really going to get into what they were, but very questionable uh, uh, song choices that led to questionable line choices, would you imagine? So yeah, man, maybe probably shouldn't have included that one. But uh, yeah, you can see a lot of variation of lines and maybe it'd be good, though, to see those lines back if you want to play it back. Uh, and just see like how those different lines affected the train, right? I think it's a really good opportunity. But that said, we're going to be moving over to a chase position here. So we're going to see what lines they're taking and how that affects others. So we see this red Alteza in the lead here. Inside to inside, pretty similar to what we were doing. Taking more of an outside line. It looks like he's doing an okay job actually carrying that momentum forward. But now that we're connected, we're really going to see any issues that he makes how that's going to transition to the rest of the train even though a small one even a little four stack still i think that qualifies as a train anything past three doing a pretty good job on the lead with maintaining that momentum looking for the outside it looks like inside corner to more of a mid outside probably maybe outside actually back to the outside here transition towards the wall. You can see me taking a little bit more shallow than I probably should have. Transition to, I guess, inside to inside. To a midline. You can see me taking a little bit more of aggressive inside. I think I'm trying to catch up Prox. And I was like, I feel like this wasn't really the greatest sample, but I think that this train ended up getting linked after this run. So we'll see. Transition, looking for that outside. That then I wish there was a track cam to show that part. I think that would be helpful, but inside to outside. And sorry, I'm not really continuous commentary here. I, I like, I wanted to try again, like kind of looking at this fresh without seeing a lot of this when I was editing. So I kind of saw what maybe looked good or not, but I didn't look at every single corner as in depth as uh, last video. So let me know actually if you guys like that, which one is a little bit more helpful. But yeah, here we're, again, trying to stay with this Red Alteza, which is now in P4. And you can see right there, a little bit of a pinch, or a little bit of a pinch. And I think that might have been due, I'm not sure, but maybe on the lead line that they chose. Taking a little bit to outside to inside back in that last corner. Then here, looking pretty healthy. And here, not looking too bad. Yeah, man, I, and I'm, I apologize. I wish I actually would have added a couple more chase runs. I think it would have been a really good opportunity for us to see uh, the different line choices, but it looks like that's going to bring us to the end of Tamada V3. If you haven't driven it, again, would highly recommend driving it. It's a very fun track, and again, it, like it's an it's a OG, OG track. So, Anyways, we move over to Minami Chiba. So this is another track that we have seen, I think, in a couple previous videos. And apologies for the track cam. Um, this is just what it is. There's a couple angles that I'm not really sure on. But that said, like, this is another track that I'm really trying to fish around, 
see what lines make sense. And you're going to see actually a very big adoption here. So I've been actually going to this outside zone that has a little bit of a bank transition and it allows me to throw a lot more angle and it feels like it sets me up really well to then run more of this outside line a little bit too outside i'd argue looking for this inside corner to inside corner and then i've been trying to run this a little bit more on the outside of this line and it feels like when i do that this area actually sets me up pretty nice i can throw a little bit more of the weight of the car in i don't feel like i'm having to slam on the e-brake or left a brake and then same thing we're going to see that all over again hopefully and you can see I have that vet in front of me. I'm actually not really engaged with uh, his line. I'm just trying to mess with my own line and he happens to be in front of me. And, and that's not even a, a job or anything. I just was, I just wanted to point out, I'm not trying to actively chase him. I'm actually really focused on my lines and trying to figure out what works. So if you're like, yo, dude, you're so far behind, bro. You gotta catch up. Like I actually right now, we're just trying to focus on our lines and it's a smaller track. So you end up kind of like basically grouping together anyway. So, um, but you can see, I mean, this is a good gauge. Does my line have momentum? I think most of the time, uh, Turbo's lines always have forward momentum. We can kind of gauge like how far back I'm getting pulled on. You can see that that line a little bit different than actually the line that Turbo takes. And then here, again, the outside, I really, really, really believe that that outside bank to the transition, pulling outside to the right, sets you up really nice with that outside line. And I was really struggling, genuinely, I was struggling really hard um, on that entry to that outside corner but I feel like these line changes that you're seeing in this video, I, I would sincerely ask that if you guys want to try them out, try them out, let me know what you think. Like, I, I really think that there's something there. Uh, and again, going outside, outside. But now we can switch over to a chase position. So we're gonna see how the P, how P1 approaches these lines, what the effect is, how that's affecting the train. And then you're, it's gonna be very obvious here in our P4 position, excuse me. Uh, P5 position, wow, excuse me. Twice, uh, and how that's affecting the rest of the train. As you can see here, doing a really good job, I think, so far, especially in P5, it's really easy for these uh, mistakes to kind of trickle down. But you can see, actually, we're looking pretty good. P1 taking kind of a similar line, a little bit modified to what I was taking. A little bit different there, too. But the train is actually looking very solid. Inside corner inside corner and i think i have a couple i think i have one more run in the chase position here too we'll see i hope that's true and transition you can see me making a little mistake and then i think i kind of set up the person behind uh me for failure there because i think i was offline a little bit uh, maybe a lot of it actually and so i think we have one more chase run yeah so here's a here's a chase run i know it's not as trainy at the rip i think it ends up getting stacked a little bit we're going to see now what this line looks like. I think our lead driver right now was the same lead driver in the last train. So ideally, I should be keeping the same amount of consistent proximity with him. We're going to see if that's true or not. But if I am, that will help the train and others behind me uh, really understand if the line is going to be good or not. So we see here, not going as aggressively out as I did, but going out on the right-hand side, transition, carry momentum forward through that corner and it looks okay a little bit of a bunch on that corner it could be my mistake though in p2 and then boom and a little aggressive on my side i was really trying to be better with uh proximity uh luckily our lead driver is a homie but i'm sure uh it's still annoying when it happens but yeah really trying to push myself a little bit harder to be a little bit better uh with my proximity i think that's one of my weak points right now and the lines too of course but yeah, that said, that brings us to the new Takamaki or Taki Main. I know I'm butchering it. I'm really sorry, but I don't know how else to pronounce it. But yeah, man, uh, dude, I hope this video is helpful. Uh, it felt a little bit disoriented uh, and not really cohesive, and I apologize. Um, if you're watching this, when it publishes, uh, you probably saw on the Discord, I'm going to be taking this weekend off but uh we have a lot of cool things in the in the uh in the pot in the oven a lot of things cooking a lot of good things happen uh really sincere shout out to everyone that's been involved lately dude we have seen such an amazing and tremendous amount of growth lately it is absolutely insane if you're a new driver definitely join the discord say what's up 
there's actually, I'm not even going to get into it, but there's a lot of good resources there now that are set up for you guys. Uh, but if you, if you watch this video, man, I just want to say sincerely, guys, thank you so much for watching, dude. I hope this is helpful. Uh, hopefully with this break, I'll be able to reassess and, uh, make a little bit more cohesive of a video, man. These just take a little bit of long time and I always put a pretty quick turnaround time on myself. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I hope it was helpful. Other than that, I won't see you this weekend, but I will hopefully see you on the next one. Peace.